title says it all. This is not clickbait. We're building a 479 horsepower electric power wheels tank with parts from salvaged electric and hybrid vehicles. The idea really came out of necessity because we've already built a 50 horsepower full suspension Barbie Jeep and a 100 horsepower four wheel drive power wheels monster. So where could we go from here? Once we saw the body of the tank, we knew that was the next project and the only way to one up our previous builds. So we contacted an electrical engineer, sourced the best parts to get the most power out of a small package, and here we are, taking on our most ambitious project to date, and it all starts here. We just picked up our next Power Wheels project, and it's probably not what you're thinking. <laughs> If it is what you're thinking, you think like us, and it's awesome. Oh, it's, this is the biggest yeah. box by far. That's this, excellent news. Twice as big a box as Cindy. Yeah, this thing is awesome. And Canon fires real darts. Yes. It's got a functional cannon. We might need to upgrade that a little bit. I think so, yeah. Maybe like a potato cannon or something. That'd be awesome. So how do you fit in that beast? Uh, not comfortably, but that's nothing new. Every, uh, every one we've done has been a little bit cramped to start with. I can sit in it like this, but uh, sitting down inside of it's a little bit of a different story. Oh, <laughs> all right, well, we got the tank all pieced together. Got my helmet, got around in the chamber. Time to see what it can do. Days. You got a road to paint. Uh, I think I'm gonna need faster tank and uh, some better guns. Cool. Where's my radio? Can't, I, can't I shoot wanted you. it so bad. I need you to get out and put your hands up and then put the grenade launcher down, please. This is how you know it's the start of a good build. Uh, and that's if I look at the parts and I look at what they're going in and think, well, this is absolutely impossible and completely stupid. Because, um, that's exactly what I thought when we built Cindy and when we built the Colonel. We've got our Nissan Leaf motor here, which still has its uh, transmission attached. We don't need that, so we'll probably lose almost half the weight and size of it when we take the transmission off. And most excitingly, we just got this, which is a battery pack from a Ford plug-in hybrid. This has all of the batteries we're gonna use for the build, um, and luckily, there are, I believe, four separate packs in here that we can separate and move around in different places. Because obviously, if we had to mount this whole thing in there, as it is, that would not work. We did the math, and uh, with this battery pack and two of these motors and the maximum output of amps and volts of this, we have about uh, a potential of 479 horsepower which is clearly not enough for a Power Wheels tank.
Well, there's uh, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is it's all disassembled and these are dramatically lighter now. That's obviously half the battery pack, but still uh, much, much lighter than it was. All of the scrap metal is over there. All the other electronics I put in the corner so we don't screw them up. Uh, but the bad news is we have some dead cells. Basically anything below three volts, they could be damaged. These six cells here are less than half a volt each. So uh, we're gonna have to replace those cells if we want maximum voltage. But the good news is Luke has some spare cells for these so we can, uh, we can just buy a few cells from him and mix and match and get our full maximum power voltage. But uh, that doesn't matter at all right now because all we really need is these in the size and shape that they are so we can figure out how to build this thing and where to put them. Potentially just all four of them laid out like this across the bottom of the tank could work perfectly. The good news is we have all of our batteries, they're stripped down to a manageable size, and uh, we can start building this thing and figure out how we're gonna mount them, where they're gonna go, and all of that, and then when Luke comes for a visit, we'll uh, get all wired up and put an energy to that motor, which uh, brings me to the next step, and that is tearing down the motor. Um, not gonna take nearly as long, because basically I'm just gonna unbolt the transmission half here, uh, unbolt the extra brackets and stuff, that'll be about it. got the uh, differential bit off of the motor bit and uh, I took this apart partly just for fun to see the insides of it, which it is kind of fun because it's got, uh, I did a rough count here and it's about eight to one gear reduction. So that's kind of fun. But the other reason I took it apart is to steal this shaft here because it has the internal splines to match that shaft. So we can take this and use it to make uh, the track drive out of it. 100, 128 pounds. Well, that's, uh, let's see. So we've got two motors at 130 pounds a piece. That's 260 pounds plus 170 pounds of batteries. That's, uh, 400 and we'll round up a little bit, 500 pounds of drivetrain. That's a bit. That's almost a pound of horsepower. Yeah, it is. That's impressive. Some of you may know what this is, but uh, this is our snowmobile death scooter that we built. Uh, it's halfway between snow mode and summer mode right now, because that's the last way that we rode it, cause, which was like a year and a half ago, because it's really stupid. Um, <laughs> but we're going to steal the track assembly off the back because we're definitely never riding it with a track again. We might throw the tire on the back and get it back to running order just so that, uh, you know, so that we can and we can ride it once or twice just to remember how terrible it was. We just need this motor with a couple of these on it another bearing to support it, and that's it. That's the whole drivetrain for each track. If you imagine one of these motors like here-ish on each side, there might even be space for your feet to go between them. The feet could go like almost all the way up to there with just enough space in the middle for a gas pedal and a brake pedal. So you could actually be sitting pretty flat instead of all crunched up, and then a motor on either side of your feet. I think that's, uh, that's gonna be the plan at least for now, until we get going. And then that would leave a bunch of space underneath for all the batteries. And today is the very last day to enter to win the Rogue Fab Bender. So if you haven't already, head to our site and check it out. The link's in the description. So yeah, 
yeah, that's uh, that's the plan. We got our Ford batteries. We got our Nissan Leaf motors. We got our snowmobile tracks. And obviously, most importantly, we have our Power Wheels tank. Uh, yeah, so, you know, we're gonna put all this together and make one of the craziest machines the world's ever seen. And, uh, you know, obviously we're gonna have to come up with some sort of upgrade for 